Hey everybody, Austin back again with another long play video. And for you guys over on implantgames.com that might be watching, uh, welcome back to another episode of Let's Beat. So, this is Contra for the 8-bit Nintendo. It was a relatively popular game back in the day. It's one I personally owned as a kid, one I personally played the hell out of as a kid, <laughs> and uh, one I played quite a bit as, you know, just time went on. Uh, however, um, in doing this video, I was actually very rusty when I went back to play this game. I had always wanted to do a long play on Contra for the 8-bit Nintendo because it's just a game I figured I could run through pretty easily. So, I was at a retro game store just a few weeks back and I decided to finally make the plunge uh, and grab this game, which, you know, was probably long overdue in itself because I'm collecting Nintendo games right now. I've got a couple hundred as we speak, and um, to not have this game is sort of sacrilege, especially once you get up in numbers. It's just one of those games that really should be in uh, any action game fans' uh, Nintendo collection, and it wasn't in mine. I had actually uh, Super C and Contra Force, I just didn't have the first one. So I went ahead, bit the bullet, and I got it. And, um, to be honest with you, when I first loaded up the game and I was like, alright, I can just do a long play right now, I don't even need to practice, and no, I needed to practice. I was just dying all over the place, and um, <laughs> it's not to say that this game is really difficult, though, because, um, you know, it's not. It's, it's one of those games where it takes a little while to get used to because of the interesting just... Um, set up like you know your very tall kind of floaty jumps your being able to shoot in every direction even when you're jumping um, weird quirks like on these special stages right here where uh, you can duck um, and you've got to try to figure out if the bullet's going over you if it's gonna go past you you know things like that or if you can jump it it's it takes a little while to get used to and um, once you get used to all those quirks and once you get familiar with each stage, however, it's a game you can literally just plow through, like, with little to no concentration. It's just one of those games that is like that. And you'll see that throughout this playthrough. I, um, what I was actually trying to do on this is max out the high score. Um, <clears throat> because I did that once, and I was in, I was at the end of high school, it was like 2001, I believe, when I did this. I maxed out the high score in Contra. It took me uh, a couple hours, I believe, and I'm, I don't even remember how many times it took me to loop the game, but it was, it was a long play session, and it got repetitive, but I was able to do it. Uh, Contra caps out at, uh, like, six and a half million points, or something around there. Uh, very close to that. And uh, I was aiming to try to go for that and, and get it on video because I haven't done it since uh, that time period and I wanted to do it again. Uh, but the other thing was I was actually playing this game for the Atari age Nintendo uh, high score club. They, they've got a couple high score clubs over there for different systems, of course, naturally Atari systems, but they've got them also for uh, the system, um, I'm sorry, the 8-bit Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. Um, so they were playing this game for the 8-bit Nintendo competition, and so I wanted to kind of kill two birds with one stone. I wanted to try to max out the score completely to the 6.5 million-ish uh, points. Um, and I also wanted to get it on camera, or not really on camera, so to say, but on video, so uh, I could do a long play of it and show that I'm able to max out the score. Well, um... I got bored about halfway through. <laughs> uh, I started off with three lives. I um, ended up having 20 something, uh, you know, by the time the whole thing was over. And I got so bored, I basically just made myself die. And, you know, I'm not sure if I would have actually been successful because uh, after you finish uh, each loop, the game gets uh, more and more difficult. Enemies start coming out in much greater numbers. They start getting a lot. They start shooting faster, I believe. Things like that. Um, so, I mean, on each consecutive loop, you do have to be far more careful. Um, and it does get really difficult at certain points in the game once you're on, like, the sixth or seventh loop. But... Uh, I had played the game for a little under an hour and a half, and I was just like, ah, I don't really feel like doing this anymore. So I got up to about three, three million points, which is about halfway there to maxing out the score. Uh, it, again, the score caps out at about six and a half something. Um, and uh, I had like 20 lives at the time, and uh, if you decide to watch this entire, uh, this entire video feed, it's, uh... 
uh, it's a little under an hour and a half long, and you know, at the very end, you'll see me just die over and over. And even though I'm making myself die, it takes me like five minutes just to, to lose all my lives. <laughs> so, the point of that whole rant or spiel was was that uh, once you get a rhythm in this game, it's not difficult at all. Um, and the number one rule for this game, if you don't want to have much trouble, is use the spread shot. Rely on the spread shot. Don't use any other weapon in the game except for the spread shot. Only use the other weapons in the game if you want to try to make it more interesting for you or you want to try to make it a little more of a challenge. Okay, but if you're really just trying to play for score, if you're trying to play for survival, if you're trying to loop it a zillion times and try to max out the score or cap it out, use the spread shot all the time. Don't use anything else unless you die and you lose your spread shot and you just need something else temporarily, which you'll see me do a couple times because I do die. I uh, die quite a few times actually. I think, um, well, maybe not quite a few times, but uh, I'm pretty sure I die uh, at least a handful of times uh, on this playthrough. Uh, maybe once per loop, something like that. Maybe I might die twice by accident. I don't remember at this point. Uh, it's been about a week since I recorded this footage, so... Uh, but I know I do die. I'm pretty sure I die anyways. <laughs> so, but yeah, number one rule in this game is, you know, hold on to the spread shot. Don't change it. And this should be a given for anybody that's played Contra and is familiar with it, but... Uh, the R power-up is actually not a, uh, a new weapon. It stands for, I think it stands for rapid fire or something like that. And basically what it does is it allows your weapons to actually shoot quicker. You'll notice the spread shot's just kind of going nice and quick across the screen right now. Well, if I get spread shot by itself and I don't have the R on top of it, the spread shot actually kind of goes across the screen slower. It's not, there's not a huge difference, but, uh... Uh, there is a noticeable difference, and if you can time it right, you can shoot your weapon up a little bit quicker if you have the R power up. So guys, we're basically already halfway through the game, and I just kind of talked all the way through that. Um, the game is not very long. I think it could take you about 20 minutes to finish it. And so with this game being a little under an hour and a half long, I have at least four, maybe five loops on it. Um, what I'm going to do is probably just commentate um, maybe through the second loop. You know, I'll loop it once, and then I'll keep talking on the second loop. Uh, we'll see how I feel as time goes on, but I am a little actually short on time today. I have to go to work in just a little bit, and uh, I just wanted to get this out of the way so I'd have my sort of weekend partially free. All I have to do now is just edit it together and uh, export it. Exporting it is probably the longest part because it's an hour and a half long video, so it takes a little while to export out of uh, Sony Vegas. So... But, uh, yeah, I'll probably comment on two loops, and then I'll probably just leave it at that. And, um, but, uh, uh yeah, you notice I'm just holding on to the spread shot, not really doing anything else. Um, I believe those power-ups, the weapon power-ups, they do give you more points on top of whatever you already have, so uh, it doesn't hurt to pick up the same weapons over and over again. Likewise with the R power-ups. If you were really hungry for points, I'm sure you could just go for every single weapon, but I don't think it would make a difference. Um, so don't even bother trying to do that if you're just playing for score. Um, those guys right there, the uh, the really big um, car tank with spikes on top enemies, they take a lot of hits. And uh, <clears throat> if you don't have the spread shot when you get to them, they're very difficult uh, to get through. You Your, your, your thumb is going to wear out pretty quickly. I don't want to suggest it, but because I don't like playing like that, but if you have a turbo controller, um, it'll make life a lot easier on this guy, especially if you don't have uh, your spread shot. I mean, it's not a problem when you have spread shot, but if you don't have the spread shot, having a turbo controller really helps because he takes a lot of hits with just a regular P shot. 
But uh, on this level, this is where uh, the game kind of starts getting a little bit trickier in my opinion. I mean, you got these grenades that kind of just come from the sky, and you got those guys that... Uh, they shoot very quickly, those guys manning those silver turrets, and uh, they pop up a lot for the rest of the game. Um, so, um, what, one thing you'll notice me doing when I play this game is I'm just constantly shooting, and I'm not shooting very quickly, I'm kind of just like timing my shots, I'm just sort of uh, putting it out there when I want it to be, um, kind of allowing a uh, complete flow. One thing you'll notice in this game is that you can only have so many bullets on screen at once, so uh, depending on where you are, um, if you're all the way towards the back of the screen, you're only going to be able to have two spread shots on the screen at once. And if you get closer to an enemy or something like that, um, as you keep mashing the button, more bullets will come out, but they won't spread out to the, the degree that they normally do um, when you haven't shot anything out. So you can actually use that to your advantage, and one thing I like to do is just constantly, um, constantly fire as I'm moving. I think I might actually die here. Yep. <laughs> oh, terrible. I knew better than that. I don't do that on the, um, uh, the second playthrough. I think that, uh, consists of my one death on this, uh, this run. Possibly two. I don't recall exactly, but I, I do remember dying on that part. It was, uh, rather embarrassing, actually. And, um... You know, when I do these playthroughs, and on the first playthrough when I die, I get really angry because, like, I want to try to have, like, these perfect playthroughs. And I've done it before, like, with Ninja Gaiden, my long play for Ninja Gaiden. I beat the game without dying, magically. Uh, I don't know how I did it, but I did. And, uh, so, I have kind of this high standard, but at the same time, I don't want to have to re-record these things over and over and over again because that gets extremely frustrating. Uh, case in point, uh, my next long play is going to be for uh, Raiden on the Jaguar, or Raiden. It's a uh, top-down shooter, port of the arcade game, and I ended up doing like six or seven takes before nailing a decent take where I didn't die uh, on, on some stupid stage like the first or second level. Um, and it's not that I, I, I'm not capable of doing that, it's just that when I go to record these, uh, there's some kind of, like, pressure on my conscience that normally isn't there when I'm just playing these games. Um, I don't know why, like, um, I start to tense up and get, uh, get anxious when I do these recordings. And you could actually see that to a little bit, to a degree, on this Contra long play, actually. And, um, on the very first level, I'm just not playing very smoothly. But on the, uh, the subsequent playthroughs, you'll notice me just like plow straight through it. And like that guy right there, I knew that guy was coming up, but I jumped anyways and almost got killed by one of his bullets. It's just, there's something about me recording the footage and trying to play, but again, on this one, uh, as each as each loop comes, I'm, I'm able to, you know, get more comfortable and just roll right through the game. And then it got to a point where I got so bored with it, I had to, I just made myself die. Uh, in hindsight now, I should have kept going because I was halfway there to maxing out the score. It would have been awesome to have that on video. Um, but, you know, I ended up just making myself die because of boredom. And it was really early in the morning. This was like 5, 6 a.m. So, uh, that's around bedtime for me. I work in mid-shift at work. I wake up around 1.30, 2 p.m. Uh, and then go to work around 3. So, uh, yeah, I was kind of tired, kind of bored, just kind of... Bleh, didn't feel like doing it anymore, so. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, redoing these long plays is really frustrating. I, I really don't like, you know, trying to perfect my run. Um, there's one reason why I actually don't play uh, as many shooters as I used to, or these shmups, shoot 'em ups, you know, like vertical or horizontal shooters. Not like Contra stuff, I love Contra type of stuff. But shoot 'em ups, I don't um, play nearly as much of because I usually get into these uh, mindsets where I'm really trying to perfect the score and I'm really trying to play almost perfectly each game. And when you fail at playing perfectly, it gets really, really frustrating. Far more frustrating than anything else in gaming, in my opinion. Which is why I don't like, I don't like competitive gaming anymore, unless it's. Um, well, no, it's not that I don't like competitive gaming, it's it's that, uh... I guess I don't like competing in those games where you have to... 
I don't even know where I'm getting at this, but for those that are really into shoot, shoot 'em ups and shmups, if you really try playing uh, seriously, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, trying to nail very specific enemies at very specific times for very specific point bonuses and things like that. And when you get into games like the cave shoot 'em ups, uh, like Espigaluda, Death Smiles, uh, Dodonpachi, things like that. Um, you literally have to perfect your game if you want to even be able to compete with anybody else in terms of score And it's just uh, absurdly frustrating because if you get to say stage 3 and you You mess up or you say you die by accident or something like that You basically screwed up your entire run You got to start from scratch if you want to even have a chance again because at that point you're just playing for fun and uh, playing for fun is different than playing seriously for score. <laughs> I don't think you can have both at once, unfortunately. Um, now, Contra is a little bit different. Uh, I, I guess I'm not comparing the games like that. I'm, I'm not even comparing the games at all, actually. It's just that all I'm saying is I get really frustrated um, when I try to do a long play. I try to play it really well, and I fail miserably. And I die a few times on places I'm not supposed to die at. Uh, but on this on this game, I actually just kind of I was like screw it. I'm just gonna keep going I'm not doing this again because this was easily the third or fourth time. I, I tried recording this um, In that one play session, so I was already a little aggravated, but uh, that wore off fortunately Once I got here and I got you know through my first loop and etc. So So guys that was a nice Little rant, wasn't it? I, I should probably talk more about the game itself because uh, <laughs> on these long play videos, uh, I tend to just kind of talk about anything, just whatever comes across my mind at the time. It could be in regards to the video and the video editing. It could be in regards to just the process of me doing these things, which I like to talk about. Um, I, I personally think talk like that is interesting to me. Um, when I watch other people's videos, I get really interested when they start talking about like how they do their videos, what their process is, things like that, because it gives you some insight into kind of the person, um, just what they do with these things. Like it's kind of like the background, uh, you know, behind the scenes kind of stuff, and I'm interested in that sort of stuff. Um, likewise, I'm interested in things like you know behind the scenes for like music, um, movies, things like that. Um, you know, you can see how, you know, the whole process and how it's all done. And I know this is just a stupid little long play, but, you know, uh, to be honest, there's a little process behind it. And, uh, some people might find it interesting, some people might not, and, uh, might actually just put this on mute, and, um, just to see me play the game. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, with these videos, I like to talk about basically anything, so... But, uh, this is the last boss in the game, and, um, then we're done. So, we're actually at the 20 minute mark, just about. So it takes about, uh... Well, we're actually at the 20 minute mark on my video feed, but because this is actually not the first, um, playthrough I did on this feed, I think it probably actually took us, in reality, about 16 or 17 minutes, uh, to do that. So, running through uh, a single loop is not, not very difficult. It doesn't take very long. And, um... You know, what I what I probably should be doing is, you know, pointing out every little thing I do in this game. But really, if you want to just try to improve the game, and I mean, if, say, for instance, you can't finish the game and you can only get a minimal amount of points, just, just watch what I do, just follow what I do. It's, um, you just got to get into a rhythm. Just get into a rhythm. And, um, there are some enemies that you can just literally just keep running and just aim your gun diagonally down. And just fire at and you'll dodge their bullets and you'll kill them at the same time without stopping so what you'll notice me doing on this second playthrough actually is once we get into it once the credits roll this is actually my my least favorite part of the game when I'm trying to go for scores I've got to sit through the credits every time I beat the game and it's yeah it gets old after a while so but yeah you'll see me do that in the very first level and you'll see me doing it more often I believe on uh, these subsequent playthroughs and I'm just looking at the time bar right now. That's about that. One, two, three. I think I get to my fourth. I think I get to my fifth uh, loop, actually. I already have 12 lives. <laughs> 
that's another thing to, to keep in mind is that um, you get a ton of points in this game, you get a ton of extra lives. So, um, yeah, you just get a lot of extra lives in this game, so. Keep that in mind, you know, um, by the third or fourth playthrough, I'm, I'm up to 20-something lives, so. You get a ton of lives in this game, so survival shouldn't be too difficult as long as you, well, as long as you don't die as quickly as you gain extra lives. <laughs> it's okay to die every now and then. Like there, that was a really stupid ass death. I don't know why I did that. Uh, it was because, yeah. So that whole comment about me just kind of like plowing through enemies and without stopping, yeah, that probably doesn't happen until the second, or I mean the third or fourth run. <laughs> uh, I forgot I died there completely. Um, that was sad. But hey, it happens, you know, if you're not paying attention, it'll happen, so. There you go, there's an example right there, just kind of running along and still shooting the guy, so. And this guy right here, I did it the first time, I just kind of sit back with the spread shot. You can get a little bit closer, but it gets a little more risky, so. Uh, when you have the spread shot, it doesn't hurt to just sit back, relax, and, you know, play it safe, so. Um... When you're playing these games, or at least how I like to play these games, I like to play them for survival. I don't usually play for score, unless there's like a leaderboard or something like that, or if there's like a high score competition like on Atari Age right now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I play for survival, so there are points in certain games where you don't even have to get near the boss, all you have to do is just sit in the back of the screen, and if that option arises, just just do it. I mean, if you're just playing for survival, what does it matter if you try to be some Rambo badass and, you know, work all these fancy moves? If it's gonna, if it's likely, if it's more likely to cause death than not, it's just too risky in my opinion. And I'm actually guilty of that. I like, I get bored with these games sometimes and I'll just do really stupid things in order to just kind of have more fun than usual. But if you're playing for survival, don't, don't play like that. It's the number one rule. I think if you're playing for survival in any game is not play too risky, you know, know your safe spots, know um, what you can and can't do without it being too much of a risk, um, you know, and then just, just work around that. So in Contra, uh, doing that is partially dependent on having the spread shot, because if you don't have the spread shot, you're almost guaranteed to be put into some awkward positions, I guess you, just, you, you could say. Uh, especially if you only have the pea shooter. The pea shooter is, you know, it takes a lot longer to kill uh, the enemies. It's, it's, it's firing range is very, very thin. It's just like literally like a pixel on the screen, maybe a couple pixels, um, you know? So uh, the number one rule to, to play like that is to have the spread shot in this game. And that's actually the same for uh, Super C, the follow-up, uh, which I will eventually do a long play of, maybe sooner than later, because, um, well, just because since I was playing this one a lot, I would like to play Super C as well. So, I haven't played that one in a long time either, but, uh, I don't recall, well, actually, you know, I, I recall Super C being a little more challenging, but at the same time, not. It's just hard to describe. It's just like, uh... It was basically the same kind of game, but the, the levels were laid out differently, obviously. They added things like hills and so forth. Not everything is flat in Super C, so... There's a little bit more to worry about in that game as far as, uh, you know, enemies and, you know, platforms, things like that. But I recall being able to roll through that game pretty quickly as well, but I never did try to loop it. I never did try to loop that game. Uh, the only reason I ever tried to loop the first counter actually is because uh, when I was in my senior year of high school back in 2001, uh, my, my buddy took me down to uh, University of Virginia, UVA. Uh, his sister was actually down there going to school. Her and her boyfriend had a place and they were roomed with this other guy. Um, and they were all getting back into the Nintendo. They had a Nintendo system with a bunch of games, you know, mostly the popular stuff like Mega Man 2, Contra, Super Mario Brothers, you know, Tetris, things like that. 
And, uh, they had this little high scoreboard on their, on their, uh, on their wall. It was like, a dry erase board or something like that. And they had a bunch of scores listed, one of them was Katra. And I don't remember what the guy's score was, but he had a few million points on this game. He obviously looped it several times. Um, but back then I was really in my peak, so to say, as far as the old school games. I was still playing Nintendo quite a bit back then, even though I was also into stuff like Dreamcast and Saturn and... Ooh, sorry, 3DO, Neo Geo CD, and Sega Genesis, and blah blah blah, the list goes on and on, because I was really obsessed with uh, gaming and collecting back then. Far more than I am now, uh, if you would believe that, and I'm still pretty obsessed with it today. <laughs> but the point is, I saw that score, and the buddy I went down there with, my buddy Jeff, uh, I basically made a pact with him saying, by the end of the week, and I'm gonna have his Contra score beaten. And so, what I did is, once they would go to bed at night, I would turn on the system, and instead of going to sleep, uh, I think I was like sleeping on the couch at that time. <laughs> instead of going to sleep, I would, uh, I would play Nintendo, I would play Contra. And, uh, I managed to get to the point where I, um, uh, almost beat his score. And, um, and I didn't, I died. I got a game over before beating his score, and I don't remember what his score was at this point. Um, I had to do several, several loops in order to get close to it. So, I, you know, he must have been at least around the 3 million mark that I'm at right now, or that I got to in this playthrough. And, um, you know, I didn't do it, and I spent a couple hours of playing trying to get to it, or what at least felt like a couple hours of playing, and I did not do it. And, um... So the next night, I tried again. I don't remember if I actually did it the next night or if it was the last night, but um, I eventually did beat the score. Um, plastered it on the uh, on his uh, dry erase board, and actually, uh, I think what happened was I beat his score. And not only did I beat it, but I decided to keep going. And I did, and I got to the point where the score would no longer increase. And I noticed it after a few stages. I didn't notice it at first, but the score wasn't going up. And that's when I personally found out you can cap out the score in Contra. Um, you know, you know, now with the you know the internet having exploded as largely as it has, I mean, it wasn't quite as big back then. It was still big, but not you know. Uh, no, not everybody and their grandmothers were using it back then. Um, um, I guess I was saying, like, I didn't, I didn't know that the score capped out in this game. I never bothered to look up it or look it up on the internet or things like that. So uh, I found it out personally just by trying to beat this guy's score and beating it, but then deciding to keep going and saying, okay, that's, that's not good enough. I got to keep going. I got to make it so uh, he's going to have a hard time beating my score. And he probably never did beat my score <laughs> because you can't you know you, you can only go so high he might have gotten to it but I, I never talked to the guy again I never uh, saw him again um, I know he's still around I'd be curious to see um, you know where he is it'd be funny to actually just ask him that and hey be like hey you remember that Contra score that one guy you know back in college beat um, that would that would be hilarious to see if he still remember that and to see if he actually, you know, ended up maxing out the score himself. So, I'm sure he would probably still remember something like that. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. Um, then the whole Nintendo thing might have been a fad for a lot of those people back then, and they might have just moved on. Uh, me, it was just, it was my childhood. It was what I did. You know, I played video games more than anything else. Um, I mean, I had friends, things like that. But aside from going outside and doing things like that, uh, with friends, we would normally just play video games. That's... That's what, uh, I don't want to say the nerdier kids did, because I don't like to consider myself like a nerd or anything like that. I don't really care for the stereotype. Um, and from what I understand, a lot of nerds don't even like the stereotype either. But some people have really just kind of grown into it and like, you know, it's like jocks, you know, that, that play sports, you know? They are what they are and they, they're glad to be what they are. And some people are like, yeah, I'm a nerd. Oh. Live it like a rock star, almost. But um, I'm not like that. I I just I just played a lot of video games, and um, it's what um, my myself and my friends did as kids. And um, we're almost at the million point mark. But yeah, um, so 
<sighs> as usual, I'm just kind of going all over the place, rambling, and, um... But, uh, I just kind of wanted to share that memory about going down, beating that guy's score. It was, it was pretty fun. And, uh, I'm sure there was some other point to that, but it was like 10 minutes ago before I started that, uh... That. And I died. Again. Um... <laughs> right be, uh, right before the first part I died at, early on in the game. And I don't die here this time. Actually, you have to time it just perfectly if you don't want to die there. So, I managed to get through it. And no more problems. Uh, the laser is not a weapon uh, I particularly care for in this game. It's, uh... Yeah, I mean, it's better than having your regular uh, pea shot. Your pea shooter, I guess I should say. But uh, it's not, uh... I don't know, it's just kind of hard to hit enemies with it. It only goes in one direction. I mean, not one direction, but it's not a spread shot, basically. You've got to be a lot more precise with it. And I die there again. Jeez. Um, it's not like it matters all that much. I have probably 20 lives by this point and close to it, so... <laughs> but uh, it is a little sad that I died like that. Um, again, like I was saying, going back to what I said earlier, is I like to have really good, kind of perfected runs. But, you know, when you're looping the game over and over and uh, it gets uh, progressively more difficult, you know, what can I say? You know, I'm not um, a hardened veteran on the the higher difficulty modes in this game. Because, you know, aside from that one time back uh, when I was still in high school, uh, you know, senior year of high school, um, <laughs> I died again. Um, that was the only time I ever bothered to loop the game. I never bothered to seriously loop the game again after that. It's been a very long time, so... Part of this was also, like, relearning the whole thing. Trying to figure out how quick everything gets on each subsequent loop. Things like that. Getting, you know, getting uh, familiarized again with just how chaotic the game gets. And on my third or fourth run, it gets pretty... It can get a little crazy sometimes. And once you get to, like, the seventh or eighth loop, um, it's, it's nuts, and some of the enemies in the game take a really, really long time to kill. Most notably, the, uh, the big alien head at the final stage takes an absurd amount of hits, uh, once you're on your, like, 7th or 8th loop, and that is actually the hardest part in the game, once you've looped it a few times. It's not difficult the first few loops, um, but it's a lot more difficult uh, once you're on like the seventh or eighth loop when you're getting close to maxing out your score um, I believe it takes between Seven to ten loops in order to to max out the uh, six point something million points that it takes to cap out the score so Now for those of you guys that have not played Contra there's this power up here. I believe it's it's uh, called bionic I think that's what it's called and uh, it basically makes you invincible. Your character starts just going, he starts blinking like crazy. And when he's blinking like that, um, you are invincible. And it pops up in the same spot all the time in, uh, in each level. And I just missed that spread shot. I always miss that for some reason. And I could really use it right about now. Um, but that bionic power, it pops up in the exact same spot in each playthrough, so... Um, one of the things to make the, the playthrough a little bit easier on you is knowing exactly when the bionics pop up. Knowing how to grab them, for instance, on... Um, on the, uh, the energy zone, the, the level I was just at before, there's that one bionic power-up... Um, that you actually shoot. Uh, you get it from one of those uh, power-up um, wall capsules. And if you jump a certain way, and you fire a certain way, you can actually keep moving, and you can grab it, you can shoot it, and it'll hit you as you're kind of jumping. It's kind of hard to describe, but it's just one of those patterns and rhythms you can get into, and you can do it the exact same way every time you play the game. So, uh, if you're having a hard time with this game, get used to where those are, rely on them. And when you grab them, just bolt through the section, you don't have to take your time. Take advantage of being invincible. Uh, I mean, basically, what you want to do is take advantage of being invincible. And, um... Yeah, like this part right here, you know, I'm basically invincible. I'm going to be invincible for the next 10 or 15 seconds, so... I just sit there and I shoot the guy. Uh, sort of. <laughs> um... 
But yeah, even on this playthrough, this guy takes a lot of hits. He takes a lot of hits. And like I said, on each other playthrough after this, he takes even more hits. Um, it gets pretty tough to a degree um, when you don't have... Well, it gets pretty tough to, to a degree even when you have spread shot. He starts to take so many hits. However, if you don't have spread shot, and most particularly if you only have your stock weapon, not even the machine gun, it gets really, really challenging. And um, I'm not sure if there are any other videos like that on YouTube. Um, or, but uh, I, I was gonna say, uh, check YouTube to see if there are any or any other full score, just like perfect runs in this game. Not really perfect runs, but you know, maxing out the score. Because if there are, then you can actually see uh, how many hits that guy takes. He takes, you know, each enemy takes more and more hits as time goes on, and. Um, not the next playthrough, but the playthrough after, uh, I believe the playthrough after, no, the next playthrough, like, even those guys in the walls spitting out those sort of white, uh, ball things, um, they even take a lot of hits. I mean, every enemy starts taking more and more hits, and, uh, it gets to the point where it starts becoming a chore to attack these enemies, and, um, you know, so, it, it gets pretty challenging overall. What I usually do in this final boss is I try to go for, um, you know, the eggs that are just spawning these alien-like creatures. These alien-like knockoff creatures. Um, um, you don't have to always go for them. What I recommend doing is at least hitting the bottom two, because then it makes life a little bit easier. But on each subsequent playthrough, I believe, um, they start coming out faster and faster and they start taking more hits to kill. So, you might want to spend more time going for them. But I recall back in the day getting to the point where I didn't even bother really trying to go for them. Um, I would go for maybe one or two of the eggs and destroy them. And then I would have to just try to dodge uh, the other guys. They were just coming out so quickly. It was it was hard to even try to destroy the, the egg capsules. But, uh, yeah. So, we finished the game a second time. And, guys, I think I'm going to actually... Uh, cut off the commentary portion, I'll raise the volume on uh, the gameplay itself, so, um, but uh, I'll stick around for a couple more minutes just to kind of, yeah. So, I'll admit, I was just kind of all over the place in this long play video. Uh, just kind of talking about lots of random stuff. Um, I'm not typically that random on my long play videos. Uh, but, you know, sometimes I am. But, hey, you know. <laughs> this is also a game that's, it's... It's one of those games that is so easy for me now. That, uh... I, it's just talking about it and being like, this is how you do this, and this is how you do that, just almost seems kind of, I don't know, not strange and not really difficult, but it's that the game does progress kind of quickly, it's really hard to focus on one specific part. Um, like, I mean, the game's not long at all, and it's almost kind of like trying to talk about Ninja Gaiden, because uh, you can just literally bolt right through that game. You can literally just bolt right through that game, and it's, um... You know, it's hard to focus on one particular thing without just kind of trying to play catch-up all the time. It's like, oh, well, that thing that I just passed two screens back, well, this is how you want to, you know, do it. And it's, it's not really, ah. Uh, this game isn't really conducive to that kind of talk, you know, so... I'm not really talking like that. I'm just kind of going all over the place, just saying what's up, whatever's on my mind at the moment. And, uh... <laughs> Not exactly the most concise manner, as well, because I did just wake up. I'm still a little, blah, I'm still waking up, I guess you could say. <laughs> so, uh, first thing I did this morning was I woke up. Not even an hour ago, 
and I grabbed a uh, sort of a breakfast bar and I grabbed a glass of milk and then I used the bathroom and then I came up and I started recording this so I haven't even been up all that long about as long as this video has been going so this video has been going for close to 40 minutes I've probably been up for about 50 minutes so um, but uh, once I wrap this up I'll actually um, be uh, heading straight off to work yeehaw <laughs> So, but I'll probably be editing this video together tonight and uh, exporting it probably while I'm sleeping because it takes a long time to export. So, and uh, I might even have it uploaded. Well, I might not have it uploaded till next week because I have another long play I want to upload prior to it. So, I don't even know why I'm saying all this. I should probably just edit all this out, but I probably won't. So, uh. <laughs> So yeah, guys, as you can tell, the bullets are getting a little bit quicker. They're coming out um, in a slightly more rapid succession. Uh, enemies are taking eh, a little bit longer to kill. Uh, it's still not as noticeable now as it will be, you know, three plays from now. Even though I wasn't recording three plays from now. <laughs> Actually, I might have. Um, I don't know. But anyways, uh... Yeah, this guy especially starts shooting out quicker. Um, I think it gets to a point where his bullets start taking a lot of hits. It's really difficult to even destroy his bullets at one point in time. That's provided you don't have the spread shot. So, I'd really like to demonstrate the game just getting all out crazy on you, which is which is when you get really high in loops. Uh, lots of enemies just are coming out all the time. It gets pretty challenging. Um, and. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to show that to you. So, but and, you know, anyways, guys, I'm just kind of I'm not, I'm not even speaking cohesively or concise anymore. I'm, I might as well just just stop the commentary portion. I've <laughs> um, so uh, I want to say thanks for watching. Uh, for those of you guys new to my channel, you know, thanks for subscribing if you do. Um, I'll be back with some more videos sometime soon. I'll be back with some more kind of casual talk and play videos. I'll be back with more long plays and let's beats like this. And, uh, you know, I'm working on some more uh, full-on, you know, video specials that take a lot more work. So, uh, if you're interested in that sort of thing, be sure to subscribe. And, uh, you know, to those of you already subscribed, thank you. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video as kind of all over this place all over the place as it might have been so <laughs> and uh, in the future I'll definitely be trying to do uh, a long play on Super C so which was the follow-up to this game um, I won't be doing Contra Force on Nintendo at least it's not as far as I know yet because I'm not very familiar with that game I have it but it's is very difficult in its own right it's not even really like any of the other Contras um, so don't expect a long play of that one ever really <laughs> unless I get really good at the game but right now I'm I'm terrible at it so don't expect a long play of Contra Force um, I might actually go on hiatus for a little while with these long play videos uh, after the next few are uploaded but um, I do hope to eventually do other Contra games as well like the arcade Contra the Arcade Super C, which you can get on Xbox Live Arcade for Xbox 360. Um, Contra Hard Corps for the Sega Genesis. Um, maybe another one or two. Uh, Operation C for the Game Boy. <laughs> I'm pretty familiar with most of the Contra games, so... Um, I hope to eventually do long plays on those in the future, too. But uh, I, I cannot say when, so... But um, with that, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later, and um, take care. Bye.
Thank <laughs> you. 